It's a pleasure to have Nicholas Volk here, founder of Erde, known to probably most of you. Uh, and you're going to talk about design and design subject. I'm indeed the subject of today. And um, what I'm going to do is um, say something about the challenges facing suburbs in London. I want to refute the lady from Bromley that there is no chance of building anything substantial. Can you hear him? Can you hear me all right? Okay, good. Um, and I want to, um, uh, following talking, saying something about challenges, I want to uh, introduce some lessons that one might take from... Uh, looking at various uh, European examples of new suburbs, uh, and this is based on a number of study tours that we've been running for different parts of Europe, largely in connection with something called the Cambridge uh, Growth Charter. And these principles have, have been uh, used to draw up a set of uh, principles for developing areas around Cambridgeshire. And if you're interested in any of these things, they are all available on our website for free, so all you've got to do is Google Urbed, urbed.co.uk, and you can get into a whole series of reports on learning from uh, Germany. There will soon be one on learning from Berlin and so on. And um, my sort of starting point is the, to say that um, in a number of parts of London, and this actually happens to be Hackbridge, better known for being the uh, site of Bedsed. It's next to the old Beddington sewage farm, and um, uh, it's uh, an area... Uh, where currently the London Borough of Sutton is proposing to develop some 2,000 new homes and to create a, a model for a sustainable uh, suburb. And indeed, uh, Richard and I will be taking part in, a, in an event to launch Hackbridge Week, uh, uh, remember the name, um, on February the 25th. And I'm sure those of you who are interested will be very welcome to come down there uh, for the afternoon. And it's also a chance to have a look at Bedzed, which has um, achieved quite a lot of, of fame. And if I was just to point out a few features, uh, um, there are, like many parts of London, uh, uh, industrial sites which may be uh, underutilised and where there are issues about what's to be done uh, with them. Uh, the areas uh, optimistically known as metropolitan open uh, space, co totally inaccessible to anyone except, I suppose, somebody with a Rottweiler um, and, uh, or kids uh, wanting to uh, get up to no good. And um, there are uh, overcrowded roads, there are, happens to be a river the, somewhere around here, the Wandle. Uh, and, um, but most important of all, there is a railway line. There's a railway line that runs from London uh, through to, uh, uh, next to Hackbridge you get uh, Carsholton and then Sutton, and I think it actually runs on to Epsom, uh, where frequent services can take you uh, to uh, uh, London in about half an hour. Now, uh, this sort of place which was developed uh, over the centuries, but largely in Victorian times to meet the needs of local industry, is the sort of area uh, which is in a state of flux and uh, where there are issues about which way it should go. And it's that kind of area I think we should bear in mind in uh, what I'm now going to, uh, to say. And um, I want to uh, start with um, a point about... Uh, oh, I will just say that we, we have done quite a lot of research uh, so if you're interested in these kinds of things, uh, we started with uh, uh, what, what's supposed to be the GL, a policy on suburbs, city of villages, which developed a series of themes based upon a number of case studies. And then we produced a toolkit called Tomorrow's Suburbs, and if you put Tomorrow's Suburbs into Google, you should get access to it. It's not as we wanted to make it a fully sort of interactive uh, toolkit, but it's, it sort of works. Uh, there's a report for CIRA on suburbs, and then a whole edition of Built Environment, um, which includes a very useful article on, on lessons from uh, Holland and then uh, uh, something which is about to come out for Roundtree Foundation called Making Connections, which is on lessons from Europe. Now, in the report City of Villages, um, which is, a, I guess, a t and Rasmussen sort of used that phrase in, in London, the unique city, he observed that London was quite unlike any other city. And if any of you ever say, oh, it should be like Barcelona, you should go back to Rasmussen to realize that London isn't built on a, a plan, but it, uh, it coalesced uh, over uh, several hundred years in a rather wonderful way. And if you look at the centers, and this is a, a map showing the, 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 the main centers, it's uh, the railway stations and shopping centers, and then the areas which are within, uh, I think, 800 yards of them, you find that uh, London in the 19th century grew up largely around the, the tram routes and the, uh, 
rail, the suburban railway lines to the south and the uh, metropolitan, uh, the underground lines built by the different companies uh, to the north. And so you get this series of sort of radial links and uh, it's sort of gradually coalesced. And, but in the 1920s, in, in what was the great period of house building in Britain, we developed this unique British compromise um, of, of, the, of the semi um, at uh, about uh, 12 to the hectare. Um, and we sought to give people this idea that they were living in a combination of the country and the, and the town with, and very importantly, the garden in, in the front, which I think is the, the feature above all of suburban tree-lined streets and so on. And that was very popular. We built more houses. We built houses at a faster rate then than ever since. And we built them along these arterial roads, which were uh, created out of London and nearby. Uh, there would be industry, a modern industry, and you can see it in places like the Great <coughs> West Road, and um, uh, or down. In, in, I suppose in every outer London borough, there is one of these major arterial roads. In the la in living memory, all that has changed, and those. Factories have closed down, often to be developed, redeveloped as retail parks. Um, we've created a kind of version of a, what the Americans call uh, edge city, and we've developed a very car-based lifestyle, when in, the, where in the suburbs you use the car for practically everything. It's worth pointing out that though car ownership in Britain is significantly lower than in Germany, car usage is much higher. And th this is one of the challenges, it's not to stop people owning cars, but it's to stop them using it for every uh, purpose under the sun. And the reasons for wanting to uh, stem uh, excessive usage of the car are something to do with conserving resources. And remember, once we insulate our houses, once we build houses to higher standards, the consumption of energy in the home will drop significantly, but that energy consumed uh, it, by transport, particularly if it's stuck in a traffic jam, is, 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 is probably the biggest challenge. Not only, uh, we're not going to save the planet, that's kind of pretty doomed, I think, but I think there is, there is a, an issue of learning to live with climate change and uh, learning to live with fuel costs, which are going to be many times their current levels, uh, and try to have a healthier lifestyle so we're not uh, choking uh, from excessive pollution. Um, Part and parcel of that uh, change has been the decline of centres, particularly the smaller centres, investment being concentrated in the, uh, the largest uh, centres. So we've got uh, a, a, a increasing sort of polarisation uh, uh, between the, 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 the major centres, um, the metropolitan centres and, and the local centres, uh, a big issue about what's to be done, uh, particularly on their edges, and a, a feeling that not only environmental capital, the quality of life, but social capital and uh, the amount of people you know and bump into and so on could well be uh, declining. And people feeling that therefore the, 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 the life that they sought to get in the suburbs is no longer what it was. And the housing ladder, which uh, suggests an idea of lots of rungs, has uh, ended up with lots of places. The, there are a few, quite a few rungs at the top and perhaps a few rungs at the bottom, but somewhere in between it, there are a lot of rungs missing. And that seems to be in marked contrast with of many European countries, particularly in Northern Europe, where on a whole series of indicators or measures, they seem to be doing better in terms of quality of life uh, and uh, growth, uh, or sustainable growth and, and impact on the environment. Uh, and I just mentioned one really good study, the UNICEF uh, study on, the, on, on quality of life for children, which is an extremely exhaustive uh, study of, of, of many, many different indicators. And it does seem that we have the most miserable children uh, in the world. I think the, America might be slightly worse. And Holland, as in so many things, tends to come up uh, top, and uh, Sweden, and the, the social democratic countries seem to perform uh, best. So despite the pro the, all the um, policy statements and so on that have been made over the last 10 years, the awful truth is things haven't got better, which may mean that we need something fundamentally different. Now, when we built the suburbs in outer London. When we built in the 1920s and 30s these rows of, of semis, the whole notion was moving out uh, to get away from these smoking chimneys to somewhere that was leafy and quiet and um, where you could tend your garden. And it was the ideal place for families. This was our, our dream. And it was a wonderful creation, which incidentally was copied in many other countries. And you can see uh, variants of the garden city, the garden suburb, uh, which at its best you can find in Hampstead Garden suburb uh, in, in many, many parts. So we exported a model 
to the world. But now, those suburbs have many more competitors. They are being, uh, there's competition from going further out. Uh, when did you last find a taxi driver living anywhere in London? They're all out to Kent or Middles. So people have moved further out. But also, there is a, 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 a revival, a renaissance of, of the centres and a lot of growth along the Thames uh, and um, in some of the town centres. So the, the suburbs are facing ex higher expectations and more competitors. The problem of, of how to cope with all these cars. And there's a sort of, when you actually do, as I have done, uh, a whole series of case studies and you go and look both within London and, and around the southeast, you do get rather depressed by some of the things you see. You see council estates which kind of have been forgotten um, and which buses no longer dare drive through in just by Banstead. Uh, you see uh, what should be front gardens that appear to have been abandoned and a sense that people are sort of moving out. They're not there out of choice. And I suggest that in looking for models we uh, should be looking not just to other parts of Britain and, and Milton Keynes but looking to, to Europe. And one place has really uh, established a, an image of being a place to learn from and uh, above all and that's Freiburg in, in southwest Germany. I say that because I organized a study to uh, people from Milton Keynes. At least one member went to Switzerland where there was also a Freiburg. So if you're going, to, Germany is the place. But you go to Basel Airport or to Karlsruhe. Um, and if you go there, you will see a, a, a wonderful historic town, and, and you may not realize that it was completely flattened by the British in 1944, quite unnecessarily, I'm embarrassed to say, as there is absolutely zero mili of any military or industrial importance in Freiburg, just on the edge of Black Forest. And, but it's such a desirable and attractive place today, it's one of the few German cities to really be growing, that they've been forced to extend the boundaries and they've extended them in two new suburbs, one of which is known as Vauban, after the name of the uh, uh, French military uh, general, military, uh, military um, engineer, wasn't it? Um, because there was a, a barracks there. And uh, the other is called Rieselfell, which means something like sewage farm in uh, German because it was on a sewage works. Um, so, um, and if you go to Vauban and you saw some of the pictures, you see a very different world, and it's a world of communal spaces, and I think we've got to distinguish between public space and communal space. These are spaces which are effectively looked after and dis commissioned by the people who live in the surrounding blocks, a high proportion of which, probably two-thirds, are in cooperative groups and involving small builders. I might say, you might say, how incredibly radical, how earth could we live like that, but it's worth reiterating the point that that's exactly what the great estates did in developing Bloomsbury. It's, it's no different. And you can here see, and this may be the thing which sabotaged the CABE uh, computer, the bow plan, the building plan for Vauban. And I'm really excited by this because I've always heard of the German, and you get the same system in, in other parts of um, uh, kind of northern Europe, the, 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 this idea that they have a, a development plan which controls everything. And I assume this would be some massive document, but it is just one page. Now, this isn't, it, it's bigger than that, but what we've done is we've scanned part of it, and I, I'm not expecting you to read on the right uh, all the codes, but the, suffice it to say that on one piece of paper, they are to, able to put down all the rules, all the DNA, if you like, that underpins this place. And what, the, what visitors from the Cambridge Growth Charter process observe is that is control about the fundamentals, but then in the details is just, let's do it. People just get on with doing things them, themselves. And that, it seems to me, is very much in line with what suburban life at its best was supposed to be about. It was to do with freedom within rules. So it can be done. Um, I'm sure like writing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, it's jolly easy after you've done it, but a bit hard when you're starting. So, I mean, there is a, a bit of a magic. And the wonderful basis for the rules, which I love. For example, the basic, one of the basic rules is no building should be more than 12 and a half meters high. Now why is that, you may say? Well, there are two reasons. Uh, one reason is because that is the height of the trees and they wish to keep the buildings below the height of the trees in order that the winds which come off the mountains should sweep through and clean the air so that there is the cleanest air 
which helps to make uh, Verbe, Freiburg the sunniest place in Europe and allows them to generate a lot of energy out of uh, solar voltaics. In fact, half the solar panels in Europe are to be found in, in, in Freiburg. So that's one reason. It's to do with air. I've never heard any... I mean, is this a common principle? Do people, when they're planning a place in Britain, say, what about air circulation and how do we keep the, the breezes going through? I don't think they do, do they? Ah, in the past. Yes. Okay. Well, perhaps we used to. Anyway, it seemed like a good principle. But the second one, which I think is much more interesting, is that they wanted to make sure that no, ha no unit, no home, was too high for a mother, I suppose it could be a father, to shout to their children down below to stop bullying someone or to come home because lunch was ready. That seemed to be terribly important. Nobody should be too far from the ground that they couldn't make con maintain contact with their children. And that's, in a sense, part of the magic of... Uh, Verbant and Rieselfeld, and here's some other uh, images which give you this feeling of a, a slightly anarchistic quality. Now, I have to say that I personally, being a, an anarchist, I suppose, or libertarian socialist, love it. And we took a group of um, people concerned with the development of Cambridge University land over recently, and they weren't so keen. I, I asked one of them people where he lived. He lived in a 200-year-old thatched cottage, so you can imagine that was the kind of model for how everything should be. And, and I, I point out there were a limited number of 200-year-old thatched cottages around Cambridge. But anyway, um, but the feeling was that it was rather messy, they thought. And they actually preferred it when we took them to a number of Dutch new settlements. So I'm going to try and focus. Uh, on, but it's, it's a personal thing. I, the only point I would say is I think there are some people who might like to live in this sort of way, and the people who really love it are, are uh, households with young children, because it's, it's absolutely great for bringing up children. But I'm not going to focus more on lessons from Holland. How am I doing for time? Gosh, I better hurry up now. Sorry, I've been pontificating. Anyway, the, the, in, in Holland, there are a lot of new towns and new uh, suburbs, and indeed, um, we've they have a lot of things that we can learn from, like underground waste, which I'll come back to. I don't know why these not quite in the order I thought they were. Anyway, um, in Holland, they have built, in the last 10 years, more or less, in the Vinex program, which is the name they give to their equivalent to the Sustainable Communities Plan, something like 460,000 new homes in 90 new settlements. They have increased the housing stock by 7.6%. So, and most of those have been in an area called the Randstad or the Ring, Rim City, which is equivalent to building within the M25. I mean, it's the, if you superimpose, as we've done, the, the two areas, you find it's about the same. So, um, in a sense, they have, in, in what is the most dense place around, and where they also are concerned about protecting green space, they have built an awful lot more than us. So it's a highly relevant system. And you see a lot of the houses look rather like English houses, but... I just make the point here that instead of the clutter of wheelie bins that you would see in, in, in an English uh, suburb, uh, they have got these underground waste disposal systems, which um, uh, incidentally are, are now being applied into our hamlets, starting with Abbott's Wharf, the East Thames development. And um, so uh, the idea is transferring. They also have local energy generation. Now, that is what a CHP plant looks like. And then you may say, we have CHP plants. Yes, we've got them in Greenwich, we've got them in, um, in Bedford. The, the trouble is they don't work. Uh, they don't actually generate any energy. And um, in the continent, you'll find that they have them and they work. And they work for a number of reasons, partly to do with tariffs in the case of Germany, partly to do with the design of, of, of places. In Freiburg, though, which is the solar capital of Europe, 10% of energy is generated from renewable sources, Te only 10%. 50% is generated locally. There are 15 CHP plants, 15 little generating stations like this in a, in a city of 200,000. And that, they say, is the key to saving energy because if you generate energy in big power stations a long way away, you lose it all in the transmission. It all goes to heat up the the air. Whereas if you generate it locally, not only do you l save those transmission losses, but you also you use the waste heat, which has to... Attention, please. Attention, please. The public address and fire alarm systems are about to be tested. Please take no further action. It's not like this in Germany. <laughs> so, 
Now, I, we believe that London could do with a charter for smarter suburbs. And just like uh, Cambridge, and these are the, the four or five themes, connectivity, climate, character, and community. Attention, please. Attention, please. And please leave the building by the nearest available exit. Okay. Uh, do not use the lifts. Right. Very good. Um, uh, the system works. Um, the probably worked last week as well. Um, I, the first theme is connectivity. This is the most fundamental theme of all. When you get a well-connected place like Hackbridge and there are many others, you should be developing it more intensively. There shouldn't be scrap heaps by the station. There shouldn't be open space, which is of no purpose. The public address and fire alarm systems are now complete. If you have difficulty hearing any of these messages, please inform customer services help desk. I, 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 I'm a bit concerned that this isn't translated into four different languages. For the <laughs> it's, um, and what about the deaf? Um, okay. The, now, how do they make places really well connected? Well, the first thing is they use rapid transit. And do you notice that this tram goes on grass? Why does it do so? Not only so that the water flows into the ground and doesn't therefore lead to flooding, but it's also because it, makes the, it reduces the noise levels by 60% just by putting grass instead of concrete. So they, they are trying to make places that are a joy to live in. Um, people cycle, and they cycle because it's safe and easy to cycle. And when you go around, you can hire cycles, and that's what we did. And people love it, and that's the great trick for suburbia. You cannot have a, a good quality bus going past everybody's front door. That's unrealistic. There is no reason, however, why you can't have many more people cycling, and particularly uh, in, on the eastern side of the country where it's relatively dry flat. So you have some cycle lanes. And where you have stations and you redevelop them, as they have in Amersfoort, a historic uh, town, um, what you do is you shove the railway facilities over the tracks, and then on the land you put, in this case, offices. So it's a major, so the offices are by the station where people can reach them by public transport from many other places. It's a great station, well worth seeing. So, where have I gone? The, and there's the tram and so on. The climate, I, 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 there are three aspects there's energy, there's waste. Uh, and there's water. And the water, of course, means subsystems. In Britain, in Upton, we now have a subsystem, which is great. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't quite work because the builders didn't get the levels right, so EP have learned that next time they've got to put in the system themselves and just charge the developers. But they are not only great because they save, they hold the water, but they create natural habitats because water allows plants and trees to grow. And if we allow kids to play near them, which they do, in, you know, and if we collect the rubbish, which we don't in Britain, then they are a joy to see. And you can see um, the use of water heavily in Dutch settlements. And we were told in one of them, treat water as your friend, not your enemy. Or make water your friend, not your enemy. And that seems to be a really good adage to use. And I think the ger these Dutch requirements are that 15% of the area of a site has got to be given over to, to water. So they're they're basically continually creating a new landscape um, and one that's in a flat area. Is, and you've got some more um, of these tubes for underground storage. They too have solar panels integrated into the roof. And the third theme is character. And the feeling is that we should be creating neighborhoods that are distinctive. Now, we have an amazing system in Britain where builders put up, house builders put up houses, every one of which is quite different. And yet they create places that are other the whole look exactly the same. I, I find this quite extraordinary. Um, and I suggest that what we should be trying to do is to allow people to individualize their houses. And what you see, uh, again, going back to Vauban um, or, or Rieselfeld, um, is the way that they have very simple structures which allow you to have more space. They have about, the floor area is about twice the size of, of the average British floor area. Um, but they then stick a bit of architecture on the front in, the, in, in terms of balconies, which allow things to grow up, and therefore everywhere looks very individual. They also are not afraid to remold the land. When you're doing development, you have to shift earth around. And in the case of uh, the one uh, place I've illustrated to the bottom, um, you, you can see they've created a sort of rampart or wall around the edge of the settlement. Now, that's really good 
as in this case, you're, if you're on the edge of a, a motorway. I, I think it must be Vatos. Um, and um, I think there was also some justification to do with Roman walls. But what it means is that kids have places to play. And if they can play in, in, on their own, they're going to grow in, in all senses of the world. And this is a sports hall. And I'm sure if we had done a sports hall, we'd have put up some bloody great structure, which would, it may or may not have any architectural merit, but would be an obstruction to movement. Here you can walk over the sports hall because it's sunk into the ground. Of course, if you sink something into the ground, then you've reduced its energy requirements because it's going to be insulated. Uh, eco houses, yes, they're not, they're not all eco towns, but most settlements have a, a, a proportion of homes which are trying to do uh, fresh things in terms of minimizing uh, the consumption of, of, of energy. And you can see, in this case, individual houses. So I think that's, again, one of the reasons why people like the, du the, the, the Dutch style of neighborhood is more like the British one, even though they're buildings, in my way, to my way of thinking, a little stark. Little, you know, sort of postmodernist. And finally, the notion of community, places where people live out of choice, and the emphasis on health. And in all these Dutch developments, there will be a big project uh, office where all the people working on the project come together. They're not all stuck in separate offices. So the engineers and the social development people and the designers and so on are all stuck in the same place as a bloody great model. You can see uh, what you're getting, you can, uh, and, and then that's used as a place for selling the, the, de the, the developments. Um, uh, and uh, you can see how it, they've developed this really neat idea in, in Freiburg of people owning a tree. You have individual street trees, and people have individualized their tree. And I think that's something rather great about that, because it will increase the chance of that tree being watered and cared for and being valued uh, in, in, over the long term. Um, and in Britain, however, I think we have got a, another model, which, and this is uh, showing the point about development trusts, and um, this is a scheme we did in Shenley a long time ago, uh, sometimes called Porter's Park near Elstree, uh, where there's a 45-acre country park looked after by a development trust. So, it, but it, in a sense, it's the same thing. It's the notion that you can uh, bring responsibility for the public realm closer to the community. These play streets, home zone, I mean, they're all the streets, effectively, uh, are, are play streets. And we, we, somebody from Edor measured it, so it's not my, me saying this, and it's five meters uh, wide, the street. Now, actually, the, the, the street is owned by the uh, local authority, but you actually have a, the, 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 the people living in the houses have the right to uh, develop up to a, a certain level. And so they, if you like, look after the space behind it. But, but the, the whole thing is designed so you can you, only 20% of people have, in Vauban have cars. Those cars are mainly on the edge. And you cannot park a car for more, or for more than 20 minutes to unload. And I think, being very Germanic, people, if you leave it for more than 20 minutes, there's some busybody who says, you, you can't do that here. And that's as it should be, because this is a suburb. That's it.